Martin and welcome to another great edition of MP Astro. So it's been a while since my last video but I can assure you that this video is going to be absolutely awesome. I've always wanted to do this, I've waited a considerable amount of time uh, for spares, uh, parts to arrive. Uh, at the moment what we've got we are, we are struggling, we are really are struggling uh, just even to order any astronomy cameras, telescopes, equipment. It is arriving in UK but it's very slowly and uh, there's some of the parts that I've ordered and I've waited literally three months. Alright, no joke. But please guys and girls, be patient. Uh, a lot of the companies and the manufacturers are doing their absolute best uh, to um, get all this equipment for you guys and girls. Again, everyone's having a hard time. Um, the economy is sort of slowly picking up. But I can show you in this video, I've always wanted to do this. And as you can see here, I've got my mighty Maxitov 180. So with this guy, watch your 180. It has delivered some fantastic views. Now I've come up with loads of uh, ideas to improve on this telescope and uh, one of them is this. That dovetail, the Vixen dovetail, is not the best. I uh, totally agree. It's, I think it's too small for the main tube. The main tube is compact, don't get me wrong, but it is heavy and it's, it is a considerable amount of weight for a dovetail bar, a uh, Vixen dovetail bar, with two, two screws and bolts holding the whole weight. And to be honest, I don't really like it. The other thing is, with this Vixen dovetail, when you clamp it onto the mount, it's not like a positive sort of fixture. It's sort of like, if you get it misaligned or something like that, there's, you can't see it very well on this clamping system on the EQ5. So, the other thing is, with the dovetail, yes, it does lower uh, the, the actual weight of the tube. However, there's no protection on the main tube. So the main tube is also um, not very protective and you can easily scratch the main tube. So there's a lot to do, uh, there's a lot to do on this telescope to improve on the performance. But the first thing I'm going to do is sort out that Vixen dovetail. I don't really like it. I have no idea why Skywatcher are continually keep making these uh, Maxitov 180s with the smallest dovetails known to mankind. I really don't get it. Ideally, we should be looking at more of a Lost Mandy style. There are all alternatives where you can uh, an adapt an adapter plate on there. If you check out the link below, there is that. However, I don't really like that because end of the day. All it does is, yeah, it gives you a much more better clamping system. However, this adapter plate is not replacing those two screws. So you're adding more weight, more adding more pressure to those two screws inside that tube. So I'm fed up with it. All right, I'm going to change it, and I'm going to have. I've come up with a few parts and a few ideas. However, I'll be seriously honest with you guys and girls, these parts that I ordered had to be specially made for me. Um, but I will show you these parts in closer detail. It is an expensive modification. This is not a cheap form of modifying, by all means. And I just need to highlight this quite, quite a lot, that this, to do this, will cost you about £300 overall to do it but at least it, they are professionally made and to be honest with you you get what you get but any day if you're keeping the telescope for a lifetime why not splash the cash 
Because in the day, disc telescope iPod is definitely a keeper, without a doubt. So these modifications are not cheap. So they're not a cheap way of modifying. If there are cheaper alternatives out there, please feel free. But to be honest with you, I have really, really struggled. I have done a lot of research, contacting a lot of companies to find if they can make any cheaper alternatives uh, to replace this fixing dovetail. And believe me, there are only one company, and this was Ryan Optics from the UK. And don't be confused by the American company, Orion Optics. Orion Optics in UK have made uh, these parts for me and for me to for to for me to achieve this um, modification. And believe me, they're the only company that, that uh, literally helped me out through um, this design. All I did was provided a few good measurements. But please feel free if you're interested on these on the product that I've got for this telescope, please check out the link below. And believe me, uh, I've been, I have informed Orion Optics and I've contacted John and I said to him that if this video, when I publish this video out, I guarantee you, John, there'll be a fair few people who will be very, very interested on these parts that I've got for this telescope. And another thing I need to highlight, if you script out the optics, of this optical system on the Mac, you must perform collimation, all right, without a doubt. Don't get me wrong, if you're gonna strip out this optics, make sure you've got an artificial star like this one. This is a geo-optic uh, fiber star, okay? I've had this for quite a few years, and basically it's an artificial star, I place it at a very far distance, about 20 to 30 meters, and this will imitate a fake star for me to adjust the optics on this Maxitov. Now, I have done a video many, many, many years ago. It's still a very good video, but I guarantee you now that the optics and the adjustments are exactly the same on the 180. The other one was a 127. But the actual design itself, with the collimation screws and the lockdown on the primary mirror, they're exactly the same format, no matter what, okay? you just got to be very careful because it's a bigger tube, and if you are considering taking it apart, I guarantee you need to collimate the primary mirror and the meniscus lens, without a doubt. The good thing about this system is that the secondary um, the actual secondary mirror, the plating of the meniscus lens is fixed. So the only thing you really need to worry about is adjust the primary mirror at the back. So get yourself an artificial star. I'll provide the links below. I have done a video many, many years ago. Please refer to that video. Check it out from the top. It is old, but the same procedure applies to this telescope without a doubt. It is a long video, but that video has helped a lot, a lot of people throughout the years. And again, you never know, if you're careful with the optics, and you, uh, as you're disassembling and, and assembling it together, maybe you might be lucky, maybe it might stay collimation. But don't take chances. If you are stripping this system out, artificial star, or alternatively, you set the telescope during the night, focus on a bright star like Vega or Ante or Antares or something like that, something really bright. Put the telescope out of focus so you see the little ringlets, okay? So you just see like a big massive donut and you see little, little ringlets all the way around. And then if they're not central, you then adjust your collimation screws. It's that simple. Don't get the adjustments are very tiny amounts as well. So you only do a little bit of tiny adjustments and that is it. But anyway, that's enough. So if you're going to undertake this project, get the equipment ready in hand. Refer to the video guide at the top to help you out to do the collimation. And believe me, 
I don't know what it is with people uh, giving out the fear factor on collimation, but believe me, collimation on Maxitov is nowhere near as bad com com compared to some of the telescopes like a Rich like a Richie Crichton telescope or anything like that, as bad as that. These telescopes are very solidly built, alright, and they don't throw off collimation. They are easy to collimate, you just got to be very careful and you can't go wrong. So that's enough anyway. So if you like this video, hit a like button. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. And again, please share this video out because this is another video, again, that's hardly covered at all. And there's not many videos out there that covers the modification for the Mac 180. Believe me, it's very rare. So please share this video out. This will help a lot of people that are Mac 180, Mac 150, or any Mac owners out there. All right, it'll give you inspiration. Uh, it will help you uh, achieve, achieve this um, modification yourself. And uh, it'll, it'll probably help a lot of people out. So please share it out. And again, like always, YouTube has been playing funny lately. I don't know why, but if you've not received a notification, just go back to your subscription and hit that notification bell, okay? So that's enough of the chit chat. We're now going to proceed uh, on this super tune, the Mac 180. So if you're interested, keep watching and let's do this. So the first steps you want to do to do this mod is remove any items off the main tube. So remove the fire scope. Remove any focusing aids like this uh, Skywatcher belt modification that I did. Again, if you're interested on this modification, I've done a video on this. So uh, check that video out on the top. We're just going to remove it. Okay, I mean, it's very easy to remove, so all I do is just unscrew a few screws first. So remove the main motor first, like so. And it's good this modification because it comes apart very easily. Okay, so that's the electric focuser disconnected. We then need to remove the, the bracket itself as well and again the tools I'm using is only a flat point and a Phillips screwdriver All right, no, no, nothing fancy so that's the bracket removed Usually there's, here there's usually just small uh, capsized allen bolts here but again remove them anyway if you don't have um, electric focuser but remove them anyway. So the next step is get yourself some tape, doesn't matter what tape you use, masking tape, electrician's tape or any form of tape. When you strip it all the optics down, right, you want to place the optics back in the way it should be. So the best solution is cut yourself a piece of tape, nothing fancy. It's like literally place it onto the tube, doesn't matter if it's nice and flat, okay, make sure that the tape remains on there. So you've got one piece there on the meniscus lens, then cut another piece like so. All it is is a little strip and place that on the secondary mirror like so. Get it nice and flat as you can. So 
there you go. So you have two pieces either side. And what that does is when we take it apart, we know exactly where to place our tube and optics in there. Okay, very important. Again, if you rotate the meniscus lens or the primary retina the wrong way around, don't forget these are finely grinded mirrors and lenses. They go in a certain way. So that's what these are for, is so that you know where they go. Okay, very important. Probably is not needed, but we're not going to chance it. So you get a Stanley knife or short knife and just score along where the main tube crosses. Okay. So what you've done now, you've cut that piece across like so. All right. You then do the same at the bottom, like so. So score cross, just like that. That's all you need to do. So yeah, so you now got two fixed tape parts now. So now, as you can see here, there are three millimeter screws, like so. You'll need a three millimeter Allen key, and there's four of these. And there's actually four on the bottom as well. So they're all the way around the primary and the meniscus lens. So you'll need an Allen key to take each part out. So like always, before you move the screws, very important that you get the telescope. And what I found is very easy to make sure it's sort of level as you can on this mount. So on this one, I'm just going to lower the altosm off as best I can. So I'm going to lower it. What I'm trying to do is try and get it horizontal. There we go. Again, on the sky watcher mouse, they're not the best uh, bolts, but they're only meant for polar iron. So we're going to get the tube as horizontal as we can, adjusting the latter tube bolts. So we're trying to get it nice and horizontal. Now on this mount you're not going to get it 100% level, alright, to about 0 degrees. Okay. Right, so we're there. Okay, so around about 10-15 degrees is okay. So now we've got it sort of horizontal. And more importantly, we're going to loosen the deck axis and we're going to tilt the telescope horizontal that way. The reason why we do this is if we remove those screws, if we drop a spanner or we drop any tools or anything in the main tube, it's not going to collide into the primary mirror. Very important, extremely important that you take those precautions. So any optical devices you take out, you've got to make sure that it's horizontal, all right? You do it for every telescope, okay? Get in the habit of doing it horizontal. There's nothing wrong if you had it tilted that way. It's probably better, but keep it horizontal like so, all right? I'll show you at an angle so you'll see what I mean. So I'll show you at a different angle, and as you can see, the main tube is horizontal. All right, so it's nice, nice and horizontal. And as you see, we sort of got the uh, the elevation sort of almost zero degrees, but it's about 10 degrees, 10, 15 degrees. But as long, as long as you get your mount, as long as you get your main tube horizontal, 
in that position it should be good to go so we can remove you can either keep the dust cap but sometimes what I found is it's not secure if you're removing that meniscus lens this could pop out so for sake of a bit of dust I'd rather get a bit of dust than risk uh, dropping the meniscus lens and damaging the optics so remove the dust cap you can always put the dust cap later to protect the rest of the optics so we're now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the four screws so what I found easy is to do the bottom two first so you've got one here you slacken them off lefty loosey so do the bottom ones first luckily the screws are just as you can see there they just threaded in into uh, so you put the screws in a nice safe place so we've got the bottom one I'm just gonna slacken the other one as you're loosening these just carefully hold the primary mirror so we're just taking slacken each one at a time okay now as you can see here as soon as you start getting really slack the it's actually quite uh, it's quite um, loose so keep hold with one hand okay remove each screw like so get someone to give you a hand if to support the mirror if you wish okay there's nothing wrong getting someone to just hold the the hold the meniscus lens for you but luckily for me because I've got it kept in a horizontal position I can hold it in and then we're going to get grab grasp both hands and then just slightly slide it out okay don't twist it out slide it out and there you go the meniscus lens is now removed so we're now at another part now we're going to remove the secondary mirror now if you don't want to do what I'm trying to do with the next uh, process um, the modification that I'm actually going to do you don't really need to strip out the secondary mirror if you wish okay it's up to you but with the modification for the lost Mandy you only need to remove uh, that that lens system there so you can put your scope rings and then remove uh, the fixing and dovetail but however I'm doing another modification as well might as well which will help to improve the contrast so I'm going to do a bit of flocking on the main tube don't get me wrong the tube the main tube is very good it's darkened but sometimes a bit of flocking just helps boost the contrast in your images so again if you've not seen get flocked um, video just please check out that video from the top because I highlight uh, flocking uh, on the uh, Skywatcher 114 flocking is very good for closed tube designs or open tube designs and as long as they're not baffled if they're not baffles don't flock it it's not worth it but if you've got a main tube that's just a hollow tube with no baffles you might as well fork out a little bit of pounds just to do the flocking because believe me when you do flocking what it does it will help to improve the contrast on the images it really does this scope is already contrast images as it is but if you want to do the flocking then you have to take uh, the primary mirror okay but again same detail using the 3mm allen 
screw you just loosen the bottom one take off the bottom one first as you can see working with the shoe with the mount supporting it does make it easier you can take off the the main tube if you wish but I find that to be honest with you, uh, using the mount as a work base will help to keep the scope, uh, keep working with the scope easier. So remove the bottom screw, then remove the other three screws. So I'll take off this one. So that's the other screw. Then, the, then again, as you loosen the screw, start thinking about supporting the weight, okay? Because this is quite a lot of weight. So, as you're removing each screw, okay, keep it nice and supported. Now you wonder if you kept the disc and cap off, you can leave caps on but personally you can take them off if you want but all it does is just to stop dust from getting in but um, right we're now removing the last screw nice and carefully so now we've got all four screws removed so now grab both now this is where you've got to be very careful. You've got to draw it out because you've got a draw tube that sticks out from, from the focus and that. But you should slide it out. Don't twist it. Just minute movements. Like so. Right. Bit by bit. There we go. And then, once it's off, walk back walk back and there you go there is the primary mirror and that's the draw tube what i'm talking about so we're going to put that in a nice safe clean place so what i've done i put the primary mirror and the meniscus lens on a nice clean flat surface i've cushioned it with some polystyrene so they both sit sit on there very nice i've then put the the lint free dust uh, the lint free paper over it just to cover it up there's the screws they're all the same size screws so it doesn't really matter you mix or max as long as you don't lose them on the secondary what i did was I put like this can nose piece dust cap that fits perfectly just to keep any dust from getting in. I've cut a little slot to allow it to pierce through the the uh, to pierce through the um, uh, the jaw tube. The paper is acting like a cover, and I've balanced the primary mirror upwards like that. Okay, so it's not resting at an angle. It's upright, so there's not stress on the jaw, jaw tube or the prime mirror because this is quite flimsy. You don't want too much uh, twisting and all that because this could throw the alignment off the primary mirror. So keep it upright and you can't go wrong. Okay, so get some sheeting like that. It's just to, just to cover it, okay, so it stops as much dust from getting in, okay, and we should be good to go. So, like always, when you're stripping out optics, make sure you prep up a nice good area for you to uh, place your optics safely. Alright, so you don't lose any bits. So now we'll go back to the main tube. So, using a 7mm socket, we're going to remove the nuts and we're going to use a 4mm bit to uh, slacken. Now you have to move. You might have to move the dovetail outwards so you can get access to. But what you do is you line them up like so, 
and you just crack them off like so now this is the reason why I just need to show you something this is the reason why I need to flock it because I've seen that shine there even though the tube is painted and darkened you still got a bit of shine to the main tube and I don't like that and that's what you lose contrast so what we're doing is we're going to remove these parts anyway to remove the Vixen dovetail but we're also going to flock this inside and this shine here is really irritating and that's what I mean so what we're going to do is, is when we're doing a major strip down like this we might as well flock the tube saves a lot of time flocking doesn't cost that much money okay it really is worth the effort if once you've done it you don't need to do it again for a very very long time so like always go from the other side again slacken the bolts and the nut okay what you'll find that the main tube will be loose okay the one end like so and uh, this is what we've got you've got a, a bracket plate and look at the screw look at this they're way too tiny I mean seriously you're gonna put a lot of weight on those tiny screws and I don't like that I really don't like that so we're going to remove that part now bear in mind the tube will come off the uh, they'll come off from the dovetail so probably because I've slackened this off anyway you hold the tube like so and just take off the brackets like so all right and there we go the main tube is now off the Vixen dovetail so I'm going to show you this now this is the scope rings for the Maxitov 180 now these scope rings are made from Orion Optics from UK these are aluminium they've got felt in round side and um, they've got aluminium lockdown screws okay they weigh around about probably 200 grams each and for the cost for these rings they cost 235 pounds which are not cheap but it's the only company that's actually helped me with my inquiries and Ryan Optics I know they're struggling um, to try and get the material for me but they made these well-made aluminium rings these are 260 millimeter in diameter and they're the only company that makes these type of scope rings for the Skywatcher 180 millimeter now these scope rings are also manufactured uh, they can be they can be made to fit the the Orion uh, which is the Orion Optics American um, Maxitov or the Celestron okay so all the 180s of that range as long as they fit 216 millimeter diameter they should be good to go they also included the uh, the allen bolts as well but also to add I have Alta Astro Lost Mandy dovetails these are around about 39 pounds each or I think they're around about 39 I'm not quite sure but Alta Astro again ionized blue Alternatively, you just, just need one uh, Lost Mandy dovetail. But I got two because the reason why I've got this set up is I want a carrying handle and some way to place a guide scope on there. So this is like an accessory plate, and the rest just mounts onto the main mount. Overall weight, it's probably around about a kilogram and a half it's not a lot of weight but it will add around about a kilogram and a bit but I'm not particularly fussed the main focus is to have decent scope rings 
that's going to securely mount my optical tube. So the Orion Optic scope rings are the only manufacturers. If you're interested in scope rings, please check out the link below. They are £235, but they are extremely well made and so, so much robust. I'm really considering about buying these scope rings for my Skywatcher Quattro as well. But as you can see, it's with the Alto Astro Lost Mandy brackets, these are well nice and secure. And I love the ionized blue, it gives it a nice, super cool finish to it. So there's the scope rings, and as you can see, they are well made. Okay. Like so, and the actual pivot, the actual pins themselves are nice and tight as well. So you can just slide on your optical tube like so, not a problem. So nice little setup. It is expensive, but it's worthwhile. So we're talking around about probably 300 quid there on, on its own. But to be honest with you, if you're going to keep the telescope, why not? So this is the best time to place your optical tube. And again, you place it anywhere you want. All right, it doesn't really matter. But you can place the optical tube like so. So we're placing the optical tube and we're just going to put the scope rings round and as you can see already if we I mean these are it's a tight fit which is good that's what you want so you flick them over so we're not going to over tighten it these yet but as you can see there the main tube is well 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 secured now well secured and they're not even nipped up yet but look at that really is much better already now the main problem with this design is that because we've got to try and flock it this is chamfered all the way uh, so much to the tube okay so you've got to be careful that this goes so far right on the meniscus lens and as you can see, if we, t if we tilt it round, you can see how much it sticks out. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure that gap. Because it goes into a push fit, we don't want the, uh, the, uh, the flocking to be in the way of this uh, fit. And what I'm looking at, I'm measuring it around 15 millimetre. Yeah, 15 millimetre, round about there. So what I'll do is I'll give it 20 millimetre or alternatively if you're careful you can place the tube over nice and carefully line it up like so and you could grab yourself a pencil and just mark carefully without getting any try not to get any do not drop the pencil in there but we're just going to pencil a mark all the way around like so okay just make sure you don't snap the pencil it's not adequate you can measure it that way, but I find it easier to mark that area so you know how much material of flocking you need. So you don't want it to overlap onto that uh, meniscus lens. So we remove it off, like so. So, with the main tube, super tuned with decent Lost Mandy brackets, we can place the main tube over the mount. And then just lock it in place. Already, it's a lot more 
rigid now. It's a lot, a lot more rigid, big time. Just be careful to make sure that you know what is the secondary and the meniscus lens. Luckily, what I've found out is that the secondary, there is the nearest screw here. Okay, I don't think you can see that, but the nearest screw or the label will indicate where, where the primary mirror will go. So this sticker or the nearest screw will help you identify which side is which. Okay, so as you see, you got the tube nice and secure. I'm actually quite impressed with it already. And it looks a lot more sturdy, rigid, and that's what you want. Now what we've done, because we've carefully marked out, we've got the exact where the meniscus lens sits. It's a push fit. So when we flock it, we don't want to go past that point because if we put flocking on the edge, what will happen is we'll never get the meniscus lens. So we've we've marked out an area carefully all the way around the tube. Now, at the moment, because of the primary mirror, I am not going to uh, put flocking too close to the edge on here. So what I'm doing is, where this part here, we're going to just have a bit of flocking just to overlap to about here, okay? I'm not going to go way past that. I'm going to leave it to about here because, again, like always, I don't know how deep the sec I don't know how deep the primary mirror goes in. So we're going to put it to about that part there, all right? It's just about five mil past that hole. And the reason why I'm flocking as well is not just to improve the contrast; is to fill these holes. Okay. Now you can use uh, blanking plugs or something like that if you don't want to flock it. You can just blank these off using some rubber bungs or something like that and do it that way, okay? But ideally, you don't want any bolts. You can put the same bolts back in, but then they'll stick out from the edge and it will look horrible. So any bungs or flocking will help to seal off the tube, okay? So I'm going to flock mine and that's going to be a lot easier, plus I'm going to get the... Uh, the performance upgrade uh, of the contrast boost up there. So I'm going to do it up to about here and I'm not going any further. As long, so the flocking is going to be very easy to do. All I do is refer to them. If you want to refer to my Get Flocked video, please refer that. There's a certain technique I do to lay out the, the flocking. Now, the flocking that I'm using is one meter by four, four, 45 centimeter uh, width flocking, okay? It's more than ample, and I can do the whole tube in a one okay? So that's, and again, I'm just gonna cut it down to size. You can use a bit of maths to work out the circumference you want to get exact uh, material you need, but personally, I'm just gonna lay it out and then cut the piece I don't want, all right? And that should be it. So, with the flocking, we're now ready to install it into the main tube. Now, as you can see here, what I've done is I've cut a 67 millimeter, uh, I cut a 67 centimeter long strip in length and 35 in width rectangle. Now this is slightly oversized, it's not the exact same tube, but it just give me a little, little bit half, a little bit half of uh, a few millimetres to overlap, okay? Reason why I've done that, it's better to remove um, too little material than too much. So this is not the exact same length as the tube, because like always, as you mentioned, as I mentioned before, when I mark that area where the meniscus lens is, I want the meniscus lens and the primary mirror to sit properly into the main tube. So if I'm trying to get it in there, all right, so um, 
I don't want this material to be in the way the, of those optics. So what we're going to do is we're going to feed it through. And to do this, we're just going to wrap it up like so. Just roll it up carefully. And you're just going to feed it through like so and then just wrap it round into the main tube like so now what we're going to play about with it all right it'll take some time but we'll get there all right but you have to once we start peeling it back we need to get make sure that the flocking is in line with that marking we just put in there okay so we'll take a closer look from there so we're going to peel back part of the material like so so you're going to peel a bit of the material first so we're just going to line it up you may want to do this in strips it's up to you but to be honest with you I prefer to do flocking in um, in a wanna, okay. It is tricky to do, but if you're careful, you'll be able to line it up. So we're just going to peel it back. So once you've got that initial bit started, you just keep working it away, rub it in, peel back a bit to more, and just keep going all the way around. Again, carefully just make sure to peel it back all the way through. Then check your alignment again. Check the. Uh, again, we start to overlap, so we peel back again and then restart again. Just restart, so just make sure you don't overlap like we just done now. So we just got to peel, peel back some more. And again, make sure you don't overlap. Keep peeling back. It is tricky, but once you start, once you get it all lined up, we're getting somewhere. And again, you just got to keep play about with it. Just, so we're just going to keep just try and rub out all the creases you can, best you can. some more, work it in, that's what you got to do, you got to keep playing about it, it is tricky, but if you can't do the whole piece, just uh, do it in strips, but personally I like the whole complete um, layer to be honest with you, strips tend to be okay, but they can be a bit messy, so I don't like the mess, but I like one complete fit, all the way through and again keep peeling it back we're almost there but again take your time take your time and just weed it feed it all the way through if you get some creases just peel it back and keep working it so again keep going Peeling back some more material, 
and keep going all the way through and there we go so I've got one complete I've got a slight crease but to be fair that's not bad I've done a good job there so just final sweep all the way across and there we go so as you can see we've got the flocking in line with the uh, the line we just marked out I've got a slight crease there but to be fair it's not particularly bad but everything else is looking really good so it's overlapped slightly but only it's not much it's literally four millimeter of overlapped but it's a nice complete flock in there and also I'm not quite right there it's either my cutting or something like that I'm not quite level there but at least I'm nice and straight as possible so the flocking looks massively better now the good thing is now those holes are no longer there so the holes are now sealed up I might use a bit of silicon at the bottom just to fill up the back gaps just to make it waterproof a bit but personally uh, I think that's more than adequate so as you can see Yes, uh, I've done a decent job there. Not bad, slight crease, but could have been better. But it is very, it is quite hard to do one piece. But if you're careful, that's not a bad job after all. I mean, that's that's okay, and uh, quite impressed already. And as you can see there, the, the tube is a lot darker now, and uh, you can tell the shine from the painted tube. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's, so that flocking will help massively now. So now we're going to line up the primary mirror. Good time to just do a, a quick blow. All right. The good thing about this mirror is it's relatively clean, but a quick, a quick blow of the blow brush just to get some of the remaining dust particles so once you blow the remaining dust best you can we're now going to install the mirror back in its original position slide it in make sure you line up the marking like so again push it in and then line up that mark in there. Once you've got that, just pop the screws in. Again, if you're not quite lined up, just line up the holes. There we go. It is fiddly, just take your time. That's all you need to do. Grab the next screw now you may want to lock tighten these screws but to be honest with you I won't bother just I think they'll be okay anyway but it just shows you how easy it is so we'll line up the bottom screw so once you've got all four screws lined up, just recheck. Okay, recheck the marking. We've lined up on that part we've and we're just going to tighten up in sequence. Alright, just with the three mil Allen key, just tighten up, making sure you still got hold of the primary mirror. 
Okay. Okay, and just tighten each bit in sequence. Just check the marking still lined up. Right. And then check. And again, as I'm tightening, I've got two points of contact. So whilst I'm screwing, I'm always constantly holding the primary mirror. So like always, you tighten each one. Nipped up. Like so. Like so. Like so. So again, tighten them up so you can't turn them. But don't over tighten them because you can strip the threads. So check each one individual. There we go. And last one. So this should be tight but not too tight that you strip the threads. There we go. And there we go. That is it. So that is now the primary mirror installed. You may want to put a dust cap in there just to seal it up. So place your dust cap to minimise as much dust as possible. Okay, so now I'm going to put the meniscus lens and again, good time, use a bolt blow brush. Just remove, remove any remaining dust particles. So line it up. Nice and easy, don't rush, it will go in, there we go, just, there we go, so we lined it up, whilst remaining, holding it supported, put in the first screw you can, The second screw, just line it up. So put the second screw in. Then get the other screw on the other side. Don't forget there's four screws that supports this. So hold that in. And then get the bottom one. Like so, get your three mil, get your three mil wrench, and again, try not to touch the glass. Just tighten it each one like so. In sequence, so you don't cross thread them. Just don't forget these screws are a bit. You know, they can be a bit fiddly, but also you don't want it to uh, just make sure you press the meniscus lens. Now, what I found easy to ensure that it sits properly, get your dust cap because you've got the screws in place, get the dust cap, place the dust cap on there. So now you can press into evenly place all the pressure onto the meniscus lens. So when you press it all in, you've got it nice and flat all the way along the tube. Okay? So at all points. So all you do now is just tighten each one. 
individually and squarely. Keep checking uh, the taped area, right, so you haven't moved. As you can see, we're still in line, so which is good. So I've knit that one up, do the opposite side, we tie it there, we just check that one. So we tie it there and we tie it there. And again, check, do it in sequence. They're tight, but they don't need to be too tight. You don't want to strip the uh, the threads. So again, each one like so. So now, if we take a closer look, so now. We're nice and flat all the way across. The meniscus lens is now sitting nice and natural on the tube. So that is the optical tube assembled. So as you can see, we put the accessories and the focuser, uh, electric focus on there. All right, doesn't take long to install, and we're basically just going to. Uh, use the score rings and this is how good it is you can actually slacken these off and you can actually push the main tube up don't forget these are if they really slacken them out and then you can push the tube up like that to do some balancing and uh, all you do is then once you've got to a certain bit just nip them up so you don't take much, doesn't take long to just nip them up. It's quite a good clamping system. We're just going to balance it out a bit. Now, and as you can see, look at that. That is uh, already balanced, but uh, we'll just just leave it out a bit more. And again, slacking these out. I mean. Just shows you, could just shows you how easy it is. You can just there we go, put it a bit more like so, and then just re tighten them up. Let's see, it doesn't take long to tighten them up. Oh wow, look at that! Already, what a huge difference that's made. And the thing is, you can always slacken the duff. Uh, the lost mandy dovetail and just slide it up that way as well to do some balancing so you've actually got two areas two key areas so you're not just relying on the vixen dovetail to do all the balancing you can use the scope rings to move the telescope tube forward or backwards or you can use the lost mandy dovetail so you've got two key areas to do some balancing so um, already what a massive improvement already so as you can see take a closer look on the material of that orion optic scope rings really good quality mates really nicely with the alto astro dovetails i like how alto have used dovetail allen bolts that fit nice and flush it fits nice and easy on there I've used the existing bolts here because they've already darkened and painted. I've just put the original nuts and the thing just to secure the, the focuser. They stick out a bit, but to be honest with you, because now they're, they're already painted, you'll see that the screws at the back are not exposed, they're quite darkened. As you can see there, just see how much darker that tube is and that flocking fits nice and flush in there really nice really impressed I'll just take off the flash yeah look at that I really can't wait to see the views now on the planets and the moon the contrast is just going to be absolutely awesome 
and looking all the way around. I've done. A, I've actually done a good job on the flocking, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm really impressed. So, no stray light coming off any of the mirrors or the lenses, and uh, I'm really looking forward to test this out. So, so far, the flocking is definitely worth the money, and it's definitely worth that extra, little bit extra work. But wow, look at that, that's awesome. So now we've got a super tuned 180. The next step is I'm going to do the collimation. Again, please refer to my other video. I highlight it on the 127 Mac. This is, this is the same procedure with the screws. You've got the three screws at the back and then you've got the lock screw. So it's exactly the same as the 127. You do the collimation from there using an artificial star or an actual star itself. But looking already massive improvements. So guys and girls, just gonna show you what it looks like uh, with the views. Now you can see the flocking. I've got the, the optics collimated using an artificial star. Now the one thing with this scope, because of the long portugal length, to get my artificial star focused, I literally had to move the artificial star like 50 to 60 meters away from the main scope just to barely get it focused. So that is one thing I need to highlight. But um, I've got it collimated and believe it or not, I still have to use the video, the old video, to collimate the optics here. Also, you got the new four point D shaped handle fits in there nice and snugly so I can actually carry it by hand which is quite handy and uh, I'm just going to show you the uh, the contrast now this is my fault I should have done a before and after but already as I can see here the contrast is massively improved it really is improved and you can see where the, the detail on there of the brickwork, uh, the dark uh, shaded patterns and stuff like that has really made it much sharper as well. So a quick collimation and it wasn't that much either despite I stripped both ends. I mean, I hardly touched these screws and it was only literally a fraction adjustment, that was it. And I was very, very lucky. But I got it all cheap, but by God, I had literally had to put, put my um, artificial star literally into the field itself and did it that way. And uh, yeah, it takes some doing like, doing like 50, 60 meters away to try and get it so that your telescope is pointing in the right direction. So placing it, the artificial star in that field well, very tricky so if you haven't got the place guys make use of making this modification all right this is a good time to start ordering the parts and doing it for yourself okay it is an expensive mod to do you might find it a cheaper alternative but to be honest yeah I really did struggle for a cheap alternative uh, there is a brand that does some scope rings, I think they're Italian made, but to you, yeah, they are extremely expensive for a set of scope rings. But the scope rings are only able to fit on the Quattro. And the Quattro one on the 8 inch were literally, they're like 400 quid for a set of scope rings. And that is absolutely ridiculous. So I'd like to wish to thank Orion Optics for making these scope rings. They are really are fantastic quality. And to be honest with you, it's a lot cheaper. There are other alternatives which are far more expensive, ridiculous prices. And to be honest with you, if you're interested in getting these scope rings, check out the link. Just email the, um, the company itself 
and to say because these have to be specially made now the company is actually updating their website as we speak to put in the 216 millimeter diameter scope rings so give them a, give them a Give them an email first to request this because it's not available on the website. So email them and uh, request uh, for the 216 millimeter diameter scope rings. Tell them what it's for, what the telescopes are used. Uh, they might even do scope rings for the smaller Maxitovs. Uh, there's no real harm uh, if you want to upgrade the scope rings for them. Uh, bear in mind, I think the 127 and below, I don't think is really required to upgrade the Lost Mandy because the, the dovetail bracket is more than adequate on those systems. But for the 150 and the 180, I've, I really strongly believe that they should be Lost Mandy and it is a good upgrade. So as you can see, telescope's collimated, ready to go, and uh, hopefully we're going to... Hopefully, if there's any clear skies, I'll let you guys know. But if not, we'll have to make another video testing this uh, testing this telescope out. Well, 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 guys and girls, what do you reckon? Absolutely impressive stuff. As you can see, the flocking has made a massive difference on the contrast. The images are nice and sharp. It's a lot better than it was before. The dovetail system with the Lost Mandy and the upgraded scope rings is absolutely amazing piece of equipment. I do like the Alto Astro Lost Mandy. They are very good quality brackets. I would like to have seen them in different colours instead of just red, green and blue. I would like to have seen them in like matte black is what I like. I like the matte black colour. But it will match with my guide scope system and my Pegasus Astro. So I've got options to not only just carry it off using the four point handle. I can mount other different accessories which will become apparent. Okay. So later on in the next videos will be some more stuff related to this. But as you see... I've got a fantastic setup for observing, easy to mount, easy to carry around. It's added a bit of weight, don't get me wrong. So we're probably talking about maybe up to about 10 kilograms here, which is the probably the maximum weight capacity of this EQ5 mount. So I like the scope rings as well, aluminium made scope rings, CNC quality. As you can see there, yes, don't get me wrong, they are expensive. At £235 is a lot of money for a set of scope rings. But what you're getting is a much better mounted optical device. So the scope rings will also protect the main tube from scratching because obviously the extra gap there that helps it to be more secure. I'm not relying on the crappy Vixen dovetail anymore it's a lot more sturdier a lot more secure I can now take it to um, the other big amounts without any hassle so I can swap and change what I want the Orion Optics don't get me wrong they are expensive but you are paying for good quality scope rings and they do in different sizes the, the, they're they're the only manufacturer that's actually made these specifically for the Maxstov 180. They will fit the, the Orion one and the Celestial variant. So if you've got other Maxstovs, as long as it's 216mm in diameter, they will fit, uh, those rings will fit those telescopes without a doubt. So as you see, a massive improvement on security. I'm not relying on that horrible Vixen dovetail anymore. And as you see there, it, now I can mount other additional items in there without no dramas. And the flocking, you just can't, you just cannot grumble. The, the flocking has really transformed the contrast even more. So even with the painted tube, 
does give off a little bit of light but the flocking has now transformed it even better and that's what you want with planets and the moon you want the more contrasting images what this telescope will deliver this is a planet killer and with that slight improvement on that flocking will make it even better one word of warning is if you're going to do this project yourself again all the links below for all the items I've used check them out check out the description again please be patient if you're ordering these scope rings from Ryan, Op from the Ryan Optics they do take a while that's not their fault that is just purely because the situation we're currently at uh, stocks are low uh, getting supplies and material is very very difficult in the UK so but it's everywhere elsewhere as well is also struggling so please be patient guys and girls they will deliver they will make them in time I just I just have to wait three months for them to get manufactured but already I love the scope rings they're nice and slim they don't stick out and a lot better securing as well on there on the optical tube so it's not too hard in fact it's actually a lot easier to disassemble this telescope than the Mac 127 all right and that is saying something this is really easy they just slot in held in by those four screws at each end all right and off your way so please be careful when you're handling with the optics it is not impossible to do anyone can do it if you're careful just take your time once it's assembled again if you don't want to do the flocking feel free not to do it but to be honest with you it's definitely worth doing it and like I say it does take a bit of time but again it's well worth it in the end and the flocking does not cost that much either to do but again now I've got a fully flocked system with awesome images from it you can't grumble so I hope this video has helped you guys and girls please please hit the like button again if you're not subscribing to my channel subscribe onto my channel because there's going to be more awesome projects for this setup and believe me I just can't wait what I've got in store for you guys and girls and believe me this was this is going to be an eye-opener for a lot of people so again please stay tuned hit the like button subscribe but also share this video out again there's not many videos that's based around super tuning a 180 Mac and believe me there's hardly any out there so again please use this video share it out and again if you're not if you've not been notified whatever reason please hit the like button uh, please hit the bell button just to make sure that you don't miss out because the next video coming out is going to be awesome guys and girls so thanks again thanks for watching and i wish you all clear skies